beginner tips for last epoch, you'll get them here, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Fup. I'm helping Frankie Boy on this channel with the video production, so I'm basic home moderator, if you want to say that. <laughs> yeah, and today we're going to dive into Last Epoch. I'm going to give you some beginner's tips, so if you are an advanced player, you can still watch the th video, but you may already know some of the stuff, maybe even all of it. And with that, let's dive right into it. These aren't in a p particular order, just some tips. And we will start with the skill system. Uh, you have specialized skills on top of this screen and in these skills you can skill them separately. They have each their own skill tree and my recommendation to get not overwhelmed in, in the beginning. Don't read every single note that could take some time and may de demotivate you, but rather look at the end of the trees or like notes that have one single skill point. These are usually the ones that transform your abilities. For example, right here, this one makes my damage uh, instead of physical, um, it makes it fire damage. And I just went for that. And only after that, I read the notes on, on, on the path and yeah, didn't bother with too much else because when you do that for every skill, especially when you consider all your skills in your book, you will get overwhelmed and there's much else stuff to, to learn in the game. So yeah, keep that in mind. Speaking about learning, my next tip is press the button G. G gives you the game guide, the in-game lexicon um, for basically everything in the game. This is super handy. It is by far the best in-game guide from any game I think I've ever I've ever played. For example, if you look at resistances, it will tell you everything about it. For example, that there's a 75% cap on resistances. So if you ever wonder how anything in the game works, you can look it up here. In your inventory, you will find the sort button, sort item. This basically does exactly what it tells you it does. It sorts your inventory and it does it perfectly. So if you click it, you will not waste any space at all. Um, so if you struggle to pick something up, use that button and then you should have some spaces left. Which also brings me to my next point. We will stay in the inventory screen. Uh, transfer materials. Materials are crafting items and other useful stuff. First, they land in your inventory. That is kind of weird because you have, an, you have a stash which is infinite, but to transfer your items into that stash, you have to press this button, transfer materials right here, and then we'll, they will land right into there. Not really intuitive, but it's okay, I guess. So we will actually notice when we loot them and then transfer them. I think that's the reason, but yeah. For the next tip, we will again stay in this inventory. Up here, you see your idle spaces. These are locked and will unlock through quests. An important information is that there are more quests that unlock these than there are um, spaces to unlock. So if you ever come across a quest you don't get or don't want to do, don't feel pressured to do it because you don't need it. There will be other quests. There's also quests that gives you passive skill points. That's the same thing there, you have more quests that grant you these than there's total you can spend. Again, staying here, you see this little idol here. Um, my recommendation for you is keep those, throw them in your chest uh, in, in any town and especially keep those with resistance because later in the game you may struggle with a boss or something like a high-end area or a quest you just can't beat and there's for example fire dragons all over the place. You can just throw in all your fire resistance in, in here and you will have a massive advantage. Make use of that, especially keep the small ones. Maybe if you like some of the stats from the bigger ones, those as well, because our chest gives us the opportunity to do so. We have basically infinite space Base or, or stash, stash space to multiple categories for yeah, different play styles or different items or whatever, and then have sub stashes in those categories. So make use out of it. Also keep any legendaries you may want to play on a on a on an alt, like for example this book. I just throw it in here and maybe use it later for another tune or another build or whatever. Same with these runes. Yump, yump. Definitely do that. At the start of the game, it may be wise to just sell your gear. Don't do anything fancy with it or destroy it or whatever. Just sell it, get a small gold base that is 
very handy uh, in the beginning. But don't like turn off your loot filter and collect everything and port back into town and sell everything and port back. Sell the things you get on your way and don't go out of your way to get as many things or items as possible, if that makes sense. Speaking of loot filter, you may have heard of it. Shift F opens this handy tab. You have different options for filters and you should get used to it. Basically need it for this game if you don't want to get overwhelmed with all the different items and qualities etc. So either read into it or at least look um, at your favorite website where you get your builds to copy a loot filter because you can import them. Definitely don't ignore it. How you do it is up to you, but don't ignore it. Speaking of builds, uh, I would recommend to not look up any builds at the start when you are a new player. You can do so much stuff in this game and respecking is almost free. You can do so, so much. The only thing that is locked is your sub-specialization or your mastery. So if you're a sentinel, the only thing you will get locked into is the choice whether you want to be a void knight, a paladin or a forge guard. Everything else you can basically respec at small cost, if at all any cost. So you can always later in the game get a meta build, but whilst leveling or experiencing and learning the game, you can do whatever you want and I would recommend you do that. Uh, the next tip I want to give you, the passive skill points you spec aren't only limited to your chosen mastery. After I think 20 points in your main mastery, you'll be able to skill into the other ones. Right here, I can skill up into the chain right here. And in my chosen mastery, I can skill ahead of the chain. So Void Knight and Forge God in my case have the option to skill up to here and Paladin, I have the whole tree. Keep that in mind if you want to get some of the points of the other trees. My next tip is use Control and Alt and even together when hovering over items. With Control, you will see your item compared to the items you have equipped. The green text is what you gain, the red text is what you will lose. Alt gives you a, a description of the affixes or the prefixes, suffixes. Sometimes they are self-explanatory, but sometimes the information is very neat and you may need it. If you press the buttons together, you will see the range of a stat which it can roll. So for example, if I take the necrotic damage, the percent increase, I see that I have a 7% and the range tells me it could have rolled from 6 to 12%. If you have a build that plays with minions, press A to give them an attack call. That is very handy to actually control your minions and not let them run freely around or let them do whatever they want. And my last tip is rather specific, but I think it's very handy. Uh, once you are in this town. You should be around level 10, I think, in here. I, I, I don't know for sure, but it should be something like that. Um, these two guys will give you quests and they basically want the same quest item. I think the quest or one of them is called Ezra's Ledger. Um, so they want you to retrieve an item and you can only turn it in to one of them. They will both give you a unique item and you can't see which ones you will get. So I will give you the information right now. Turning in the quest to the gambler will give you Gambler's Fallacy. It has a 100% crit strike chance when you haven't hit critically recently. And the other main benefit is that you gain health on crit, which happens quite regularly because you get the 100 crit, crit chance if you haven't crit in a while. Powerful item. And the other item would be gloves. Unique leather gloves. They have ele elemental damage leached as health, much elemental resistance, which is quite handy because resistances in this game are quite strong and increased increased leech rate. Which of these items fits your playstyle better is up to you and you have to decide that. But since it's so early in the game, I didn't want you to miss it. Turn this in at the gambler, you'll get the amulet and turn this in right here and you get the gloves. And that concludes the video right here. I hope you got something nice out of it, some information for your journey in the game. If you liked it, uh, why not subscribe and leave a like? <laughs> I'd appreciate that and I hope to see you next time. See you soon. Bye bye. Yo,